Good night, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast, the third of our YouTube broadcast. So we are YouTubing. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me. Um, it has been a hectic um, last week and weekend, and I'm celebrating in my Valentine's a weird and strange color for me to be on the live. And I, I really prefer my white, um, but. I am Valentine, so I'm YouTubing, but I'm also Valentine. And tonight we are going to be Bibling. So come with me. Let us have this little chat about local government, the impending local government elections, and let us talk about the silly season that is up on us. And um, of course, a few other things that are connected to the silly season that is up on us. So let's plunge right in. And I want to start tonight by, first of all, expressing some good wishes for the young lady that lost her leg. If anyone know a number or something that I could contact her, please pass it on to me. I would love to touch base with her. I mean, she was out there cheering and going on all kinds of things with her party and whatever it is that she was doing. Um, when people meet in these unfortunate accidents um, on the political, um, in the political scene, um, it must not be neglected. And I hope that whoever our candidate is, um, our member of parliament, our councillor, I hope they are paying attention to, um, to, to her, giving her some time and um, some encouragement and um, some help. Um, and she will also need um, that help. I don't like to sit and crouch, but um, this thing here is um, creating that kind of thing. So I want to send out some love to her. So that's the first thing I want to say tonight. I want to also thank you, all of you that have been um, commenting on the, on, 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 on the videos, and liking, sharing. I am especially enjoying some of the comments, particularly from the risers um, who came on to abuse and chat up all kinds of things that just not right. But I am mad at you. I ain't mad at you at all. Come on, comment, say what it is you want to say. If you don't have anything but just a little bit of advice to you risers who come on the, the, the broadcast and comment on, 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 on the, the videos and stuff. Just a little advice. If you're coming on to defend Master Mark, then you need to come with a good argument to defend him. Come say what is it that I'm doing right or what is it that I am wrong about. Don't just come blanketly cuss me just so. I mean, I don't mind the cussing, you know, because, you know, you're a thing, you're free for cussing. That is how you feel about things, and then fine. But try something more productive, something more engaging. Try to say something that would um, start a conversation about how you feel about things. Why not try that? Huh? That is my advice to you, Risers, about that. I want to talk a little bit about nomination day. And I know I've already said, uh, talk about nomination day and the after nomination day on both the, the two videos that I put out since. But I want to say something else on nomination day before we get into the other things that I want to talk about tonight. It was the gentleman, the Jamaican, that was up by Papi trying to question the minister of education and some people have reached out to me to say that um him have a right to question the minister of education and i do not disagree at all him is a jamaican and the first thing i want to say about him before i say, say what i want to say about him is there ought to be some kind of law about these jamaicans that go away abroad for five minutes and come back with them accident and them can't seem to lose the accident so every time them open them mouth them sound like a Jamaican you know them, them go for about 10 minutes and them come back trying to impress us with them language and for some strange reason then they have 10, 15, 20 years after them come back and nobody can lose the, 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 the accident that them have the accent that them just dip on us with it you know because I found out some information about this gentleman that, first of all, he don't live here a long time, but he did, he, he did leave and went to school in, in, in the United States and stuff like that. He don't work for CNN. He don't work for no news organization, quite frankly. I don't know where he work. The people that I asked to check him out for me don't seem to know if he have any um, 
if he have any news credentials. But here's this man in the middle of nomination. And this is nomination, this is a political event. And though the Minister of Education is at a political event, that don't mean that she's not still Minister of Education. She is. But if you want to talk to the Minister of Education about the system or, or about the government policy regarding our education system, then by golly, ask her if she can step one side so you can talk to her a little bit about and ask her the questions about the, the government policy and education and how is that policy penning out for the Jamaican children, stuff like that. But here's this buffoon. Come up to the minister with this thing in the minister face, total disrespectful, talking about the, the Jamaican education system, not really asking a question. Talking about it, I want her to ask, to answer him, to say, we are doing about the Jamaican education system. Not the policy. Not the policy. Not the government policy. He wasn't talking about the policy because he would be well within his rights to ask the Minister of Education, Minister, the Jamaican edu the, the government education policy, is it working? Because of so and so and so. He's not presenting any data, he's not presenting any argument. Him just in the minister face with him little something talking about him is a journalist and I asked about the Jamaican education system. And I am from America and I live in New York and the education system in New York. New York ranked about 13, actually about 6. New York, New York ranked about 13 in the education system in, 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 in the United States. And that ranking for New York is, is based on not only um, just public schools. It's public school ranking, but there are public schools and there are public schools. There are better public schools and there are worse public schools. Now, I'm not one to beat up America about their system because America, America rated low amongst literacy. America rated low uh, 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 amongst in science, America rate low in, a, in many, many international things. And those are things that, I mean, people don't talk about because America is still the superpower and everybody still want to go to America and life can be better for some people if they go to America. I just did not like his tone and the argument that he's putting forward about Jamaica's education system as if he means suggesting that it's the worst in the world. I never, I never like it. So for those of you who feel like I'm angling up rough, I am thinking that I don't support violence, but I am thinking that because him come there with him accent and him full of crap and him not really asking a question, I never really want to answer to nothing. I think that somebody should just box him, but I'm not, I'm not supporting no violence or not. But the Minister uh, of Education and the, the government should consider that people who leave Jamaica and go abroad and come back with an accent, we should give them no more than three months to lose that damn accent so that when they're talking to you, they actually talk to you like they're Jamaican and not Jamaican or Jabritish or something, you know? So that is that with that. So I defended our education system. It is not sterling. It is not the best in the world. But if a white man did come and ask that question, say from France or from Sweden or from Norway, where the education system is, is pretty good. Um, and, but him asking the question about the policy, then it wouldn't sound so bad. But a Jamaican is always the ones who want to tear down Jamaica first and foremost. You ever been into the bank? One morning I was in the bank some, some time ago, not, not recently, and I sat there and there was something wrong and it's, everybody was going slow and something was not right about how the morning was going to the bank the park and people was getting miserable so everybody was talking about how long the mayor and everybody get miserable one gentleman him get up you know in the states where i've lived for 50 years mr hello don't you even start now we shut him down right away because right away him spent about 40 years america come back to jamaica and sit down in our bank where him come from and I come talk about him ready to talk about how our banking system is worst in the world so I have to shut him down immediately so I'm saying I don't stand for these kind of things it's not the first time it happens and every time it happens no matter who them attack I'm going to be there to back up that and back up Jamaica so learn that alright so that is that for that um, I did say yeah, that New York is a 
um, the six best public school system in the world. Um, and when you separate the two things, you know, what separates a, a good a good public school from a not so good public school is really the metrics that they use, you know, like the graduation rate and test scores and stuff like that. That's the same thing we do. We, we're not doing anything worse. We're doing pretty good. That, 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 I am, I'm thinking we're doing we mean pretty darn good if somebody should ask me that. So I had to, I had to tell him a thing or two. Now, I had intended tonight to also talk about this guy, Omar Ibanks, that was named candidate in Portmore. Then find out that it was a drug, was a drug dealer who spent time in prison, came back to Jamaica, and him walking about with Raymond Price, and people tell Raymond Price him to cut it out. Then that way, deal with him and that. And the thing I want to say about that, and I, I had intended tonight to really rip into Maureen Weber about it. Because she's a chief cheerleader and all that she did to prop him up. So I didn't intend to really go into her tonight. But me and my girls and my, like my little painting company, we did some work. We always do work for Maureen Weber at our house. And we build the bar around the back that everybody go sit down and drink and enjoy. We build the bar and the picnic table is me do the, the, the orchid bed. It's me trim up the trees and fix up the backyard and make it look nice all the time. I'm the one who did that. So when I said it in the, in the voice note, one of them girls who work with me said, I'm coming to the shop. I said, the lady, what you say about this? And Miss Weber, does she had up? I said, yep. I said, Lord God, bossy man. Mm -mm, no, leave her alone. No trouble, no trouble, I do. Come in, if you're going to start, you're not going to stop. So, Maureen Weber, you are saved by the. I don't know. Something, them girls saved you. Because I really was going to start you tonight about how you supporting this little boy and knowing full well what his, um, his history is. And I was going to talk up some more things too. But if you, and you are the campaign director for the PNP, so. I know if I talk up some things tonight, probably you, that might put you, the, the campaign thing that you're doing for the PMP. I don't know. Because you love ball and going on one car and get antsy and all and something there. So as a result of I'm um, Gigi and Jasset, and I went by to knock your ass tonight. I went to just low you. For now. Just for now. I don't know. I might not feel that way tomorrow or the next day. So you can hold that now. But tonight... But Maureen Weber, nobody don't like Maureen Weber. Nobody in the PMP don't like Maureen Weber. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I don't mean it in a, in a bad... I, I mean, I don't mean it because I am upset with her right now. They, nobody in the PMP base likes Maureen Weber. Nobody in the PMP base, in the PMP local organization, wants to deal with Maureen Weber. She's the most difficult person to deal with. But she adopted a, a drug man and she helped him get through the process. But he's not running anymore. There's somebody else. And let me just say that when somebody gets in that kind of trouble at a young age, you don't have to hold it against them forever. You know? I don't believe in holding something against a young person forever. Because every time I see the youngsters them out of my shop, they want a pencil and not a money, they want a them want a rubber or them buy a pencil but them down a shop now them down more money and you have to give them one and five of them come with two hundred dollars to get popcorn and I told you that's one popcorn and when them, every time I see them I look at the future of Jamaica and I know that we're safe I know that we're safe so I'm saying that don't hold the mistakes that they, that they make against them too much all right so let us go <laughs> Let's go Bibling. Are you ready? Well, the Christians, then. Let's go Bibling. Tonight, we want to go Bibling. We want to go into the Bible and talk about something in relation to what's happening now and how PMP people are going to vote or not vote for some risers, the rise candidates, then. And tonight, we are going to re- Repeat to you all the reasons why we cannot support Mark Golding, 
why we cannot support the rice candidate and why we can't go out there with the argument about we are support we party. And me now beat up nobody about them who support them party. Go and go support your party. Me now no issue with that. But hear this. And when you hear me, I hear me good all of you. Every candidate, every PNP voter wants to listen to me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Repeat it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave his son Jesus to the world because he loved the world, because he wanted to save us, he wanted to help us, he wanted to put us on the right path. And in every commandment and everything that God has done for us is one thing he never took from us. God gave us free will. It's always our will, not anybody else's. God doesn't influence us about our decision making. God presents the options in front of us and say, make the choice. So let me tell you once again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why did God do that? His begotten son, the son that before he was born, some kings that look for him to kill him. Before he was born, poor heap of soldiers all over the place. A killer of people picked it, looking to find him, God's son, the son. I'm going to put up which part that Bible verse comes from. Because I'm not good at quoting Bible verse. I'm not a Bible thumping verse quoter like some people, like Dayton Cabin and people. And wicked people of quote Bible and talk about this is what it says. I mean, I know where that is. The part was a for God so love the world. I do the way it is so the fight I put up for me. And that a shame to say that. God son. God so loved the world, he gave us his only begotten son. The son, who after going through struggles with his appointed mother and father, was born in a manger. Hiding, seeking refuge and coverage from people who want to kill him. That's how it started. That's how his life started. God's son that he so loved the world and he gave him to us. At 12 years old, he was in the temple preaching and teaching big old gray men about God's word and God's love and God's goodness. The same son, the same son that visited a prostitute and tell her, never mind, it is okay, I got you. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. The son that went to the prostitute, the son that spoke to and, be, and welcomed rich men, poor men, beggar men, thieves, the blind, the possessed, the dispossessed. Nicodemus, I want him the tree. I said, my name, I remember. I look for Jesus to go eat. And Jesus said, you're a yard, may I come eat. Him rich. The twelve disciples that God's son sought out. Thieves and criminals. Tax collectors. Peter and John and Andrew and the worst of them down at the seaside. A scam people and extort people fish for fish. In you know, order for them to go fish and have to give away our money. Nobody can go fish unless we get our money. And they man that Jesus go for God's son. The son that God so loved the world and he gave us, he gave him to us. That son, the son that fed 5,000 people with some bread and some fish. And I would like to believe that because bread and fish do sound so good going down, he probably make some lemonade too. The son that turned water into rum, it was not wine, I guarantee you. They are weird and the people they drunk, no wine could have drunk nobody so. So I'm absolutely certain that when Jesus took that water, he turned it into rum. <laughs> I am sure of it. But at the feeding of the people with the five loaves of bread and the fresh, the fish, I am absolutely certain that the Bible don't say so. But I'm sure. Come on. Try eating fish and bread. Without something to wash it down. 
I am sure Jesus made some lemonade. Now, if it's not lemonade, then he probably make some more rum or wine or something. I don't know. But Jesus never got God's son. The son that walked the earth with those 12 men and Mary and Mary Magdalene and some holy body of people heal the sick, cause the blind to see, raise the dead, call Lazarus out and grave, come forth. God's son. God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Uh, all of you we have got church and dress up every damn Sunday and Saturday. I want to gone. I want to know this. I want to know who spotted there in the Bible. John something. I know it's John something. I want to know it. I want to preach it. I want to talk it. But I never really take stock of what it is. Some of you don't take stock of what that is. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. The son that when it was time for God to tell him why he put him there, God said to him, my son, you came here for one purpose and one purpose only. I sent you to save the world and this is how you're going to do it. They're going to mock you. They're going to spit on you. They're going to call your names. They're going to do all kind of things to you. Then they're going to judge you. And after them don't judge you, they're going to march you through the square and have people mocking you again, spitting on you. And you're going to carry that cross to Calvary. And I'm going to juke you with a spear. They're going to give you vinegar to drink. They're going to put a crown of thorns on your head to make you bleed. Then they're going to nail you to that cross. When the time came for, for God to tell him that. What did God's son do? The son that God so loved. Jesus did like any one of us would have done. If our father tell us that this is what we have to do to save mankind. Jesus went to that wilderness or where Redism went and he cried. In ball like a baby. And in ball just like any of us would have. He said, Father, I don't want to do this. It's hard. Why me? Why should I do this? I don't want to. Please, if you can make it pass from me, please, if you can. Somebody say hallelujah. If you can, Father, please, don't let me have to do this. May I beg you. Somebody say amen, the man. Jesus begged and he pleaded with his father. And he said, if this cup, if it's possible for this to pass from me, I am begging you, Father, let it pass. But if it is thy will, then let it be done. And he walked the walk. And he went in front of Pilate. And Pilate trembled in Jesus' presence. Pilate turned fool in front of Jesus. Because Jesus now talk, Jesus now talk, talk up with him. And a long laba laba with him. Jesus now defend nothing with him. Because God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. And no so now I wonder where this is going, but we're all in our horses. We're going Bible in. Remember to tell you we're going Bible in? And Pilate said to God's son, they say that you are the king of the Jews. Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said three words to him. You said so. God son in a laba laba and a long argument with this fool. Because God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. That's what God did. And Pilate couldn't manage him. So he said him over to the next man. The next man couldn't manage him either. So he said him back. Them have God's son and turn him in a flip flop from one end to the other. Because God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. And when the time was drawing nigh, when it was getting to that point where they're going to arrest him and take him away in a couple of days, he got his disciples together. And he said, I will not be with you much longer. So let us hang out. Let us hang out. 
Now go eat. Go get some wine and some bread and some cheese and some whatever. Because some people would have us believe that it's just bread and wine. It wasn't. Whatever things they did, man. Whatever meat and all them stuff they did. That's what I believe. Man, I believe that pork they did and roast beef they did and baby one lasagna they did. I am thinking that some vegetable they did. I'm thinking that whatever things they did, a feast. It's a supper. It's the last one. And Jesus ate with his people. And they drank wine. And he spoke to them, preparing them for what is to come. And for any one of you who have ever seen that painting, the Last Supper, that painting was done by um, Leonardo da Vinci. The Last Supper. Lovely painting. More, more, it's more alive apart from the Mona Lisa. It's one of the most alive pictures, real painting. And I've never seen it in person. It's just in books. I have seen it. I love art. I don't know about it, but I love it. And in Leonardo da Vinci's painting, Judas was sitting to the right of Jesus. And Jesus had his hand in the ear like, like he was telling them that this is coming and you must prepare yourself. But when I'm gone, I'll be gone for three days and I'll be back. And when I come back and all of you will be in heaven with me and all the rest of it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he gave us free will. He gave Judas free will. And Jesus looked at him. Because he was sitting at the right of Jesus according to the Vinci painting. Jesus look at him and he was sitting there, Judas, according to the Vinci painting, looking like a coward, hanging on to the bag of money, the 30 pieces of silver, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And Judas sat there looking like a coward, looking like a real coward, with him 30 pieces of silver. And Jesus looked at him and Jesus said to him, Whatever thou doest, do it quickly. Whatever thou doest, do it quickly. Because God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. At that point, Jesus got um, Judas get up and fly out of the room with him 30 pieces of silver. Among the twelve, he walked with this man for years. He ate with him. Jesus washed his feet. Jesus fed him. Jesus prayed with him. They prayed with him. They witnessed the miracles. Jesus gave them faith when he walked to the water. He said, Peter, walk. The moment you take your eyes off of me, you start sinking. Jesus was there for them. They all had a choice. Free will. And Judas. Judas decided in his own free will that he's going to betray the Son of God. Now I have often asked myself, why didn't God stop it? Why God made this happen? And I come to a conclusion that God must have had a backup plan. There must have been a backup plan for, for man's redemption in case Judas had changed his mind. But God is God. And Judas didn't change his mind. He clutched his 30 pieces of silver and he couldn't do nothing but walk because his guilty conscience had killed him. And he knew one thing for sure. And all he knew that one thing for sure is because he had walked with Jesus forever from the beginning. And he knew how things are. He knew he can't survive this. So he's going to look at a tree. And he's going to look at a rope. And he's hang himself. For God so loved the world. That he gave us his only begotten son. Judas had to kill himself. He had to. And I wouldn't pay people you know what I talk to. When I come talk about put things aside and do this for the party. Mark Golden said, Yo, I know we are fighting a quarry. We can stop fighting and we'll win this thing and then we can start fight again. Can somebody slap that man, silly? 
you know, when I depend on my train, they remind me, you know, if you don't depend on my train and not support me, who is the PNP? When you can't go on about the business, me don't need, who know? And who know, me are remind about what this is. Judas went and hung himself. He was never, ever forgiven for betraying the Son of God. If Judas was forgiven, we wouldn't be here. But if we get the gist of that story, just like oh, no, no, the Ten Commandments, people love quote the Ten Commandments. I don't know which number this one fall in, but this commandment, the one that, this one that says, love thy neighbor as thyself, that is probably the most difficult commandment that anybody can do. Love thy neighbor as thyself. It's a very liberal thing God is asking us to do. Very liberal, very selfless thing that God asks us to do. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Which one can actually do that? It's hard. It's hard. But Judas went and he hanged himself. Now I like to think in my head that had he not gone and hanged himself, Peter and Paul and Andrew and them, they would be bad men. They would kill him. Because Mr. Judas, he betrayed the master. In betrayed the Savior, in betrayed God's Son, because God so loved the world, He gave us His only begotten Son, and He betrayed Him for 30 pieces of silver. And all I know, all I know, we are trying to put about about PNP this and people put aside and all of that, and so I someone with it with an accent. Let me tell you now, all of you. That change your mind about Mark Golden. It is your right. It is your choice because you have free will. Judas had a choice too. Because him too had free will. And he chose to betray God's son. And he went and him hang himself. There is no forgiveness for betrayal. None. If it was a soldier from the giant, the marine or or or, 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 or the army. Or some elite force, you betray your country. You either line up in front of a fire and squad, or go home and die in shame. No traitor don't live in peace and, and, and tranquility. No traitor can be rewarded for the sake of the party. You want to reward a traitor, a man who betrayed him party, him leader, and him country. How did he betray his country? By doing all of those things. He betrayed his, uh, his leader and his party to gain power. He get the power and he has neither the competence nor the experience to actually run it and be what we need him to be. Because he is a traitor. He no know. He must do that. And we, God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, taught us in no uncertain terms that you do not forgive a traitor you do not forgive how could you possibly have a man come into your yard eat your food hang out with you be in your bathroom use your soap or your toothpaste eat more than you and then he betray you and then you forgive him and he can come back how that work how that work Man, a Judas, Mark Golden is a traitor, and a Judas, and it's because we don't have enough history. Um, it's not history, no? it's money we don't have. I'm sure we can find out if Judas was related to Mark Golden. Possibly that same bloodline that travels through the world. It's a change. Our uh, Judas come from the same bloodline, and you want us to go out there, go say that this is a man? After the man betraying party and him leader and the members of him party and then him get power just to get power and then him get power and continue that betrayal because some people are backing up. Every dictator, every strong man, every wicked man that has ever walked this earth, Hitler is the main man, Stalin and all them man there. Every one of them that ever walked this earth, all of them did not do all of what them did alone. They had people who were back them up. 
them are people that give them that power. People that say what they are feel. People that them are lead to kill people. Yes, Hitler kill almost 12 million people. You think I'm alone do it? No, he might a whole host of man will back him up. Because that is how these things work. So what do you think happen? When him kill himself, them find most of the whole of the man them and kill them too. Forgive, move on, put things aside. Then they are back up Hitler. We're going to kill the Jews them. We're going to build some things and gas them. We're going to strip them naked and take out them teeth and experiment on them. And then we must forgive you. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Some Judases and some traitors kill. Some do it more subtly like Mark Holden. Destroy a party and the chances of a party being a proper opposition to destroying our country. Because by not being an effective opposition, you left our country, left a void in our country. And so that takes me to the next argument that all of you have. The argument of we want to get to the broken. Boy, Karen, if we just put it aside, I'm going to deal with it. I'll just get to the wicked Andrew. Make could get to the wicked Andrew. Make could get to the wicked Andrew. Put that and get to the wicked Andrew. And then we can go deal with Mark Golden. You obviously don't understand. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son and Judas betrayed him and go kill himself. Where do you come from? Wicked Andrew. Andrew is not my problem. Because the Jamaican voters have a way of switching one man for the next man. But they give a man their try. They give a man their chance. Because they are kind of wicked. And in very short order discover that they make a serious mistake. Our job is to make sure the Jamaican voters understand that Mark Golden would be worse than Andrew Oldis. I mean, I take up the Andrew Wallace. I mean, I, I, mean, I vote for Andrew Wallace. I can vote for Patrick Roberts. I mean, I endorse Andrew Wallace. But I tell him of this as a Jamaican. I tell him of this. I don't want to understand me. Mark Golden would be worse than Andrew Wallace. Mark Golden is a capitalist hustler. Andrew Wallace is a little boy who grew up in Spanish town with him father, him father, him father, him father, him father, him father him labor rights. And yes, him they grew up now a little board house before them put up one two bedroom wall house. Mark Golden is the son and descendant of slave owners. Me, 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 Karen Cecilia Cross, will always remember and always think differently that God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. And Judas, a man who had free will like me, Betrayed him. Betrayed him in the worst kind of way. And then go hang himself because he's not worthy to live. He's not worthy. And Uru want to reward a traitor. Uru want to reward a Judas. Uru want to reward a man who got the leadership of the PMP through devious means. Sabotaged the election of 2020. And say it very plainly in a WhatsApp leak. That this is what we're going to do to ensure that Peter Phillips lose. And after I do that, before I do that, them get 49% of the PMP votes in 2019. And they took that 49% and used it to further divide the PMP. And by dividing the PMP, they have deprived the country of good representation. They have denied Jamaica. Of good representation. I wrote a letter to King Charles. I did. I wrote a letter to him. Drop it over the commission. Ask them to send it to Buckingham Palace for me. To tell him that I'm praying for him for his cancer thing. But I also went on to tell him how things bad down here. Because we basically operate in power one um one cylinder. Yeah. The second engine get blown. And one engine will run pan. And you will alone. Around thing. Who don't want to get rid of wicked bro God? Wicked bro God become wicked and can get with it, get get um get away with the things that he does because we don't have an effective and competent opposition to hold him to account. And that's the problem. 
And the problem that I don't want to come try that with Peter Phillips. If Jam will come try it with Michael Manley, and he certainly wouldn't try it with Sister P. Sister P was like a mother to him, and she'd hold him and she'd slap slap him up. I'm sure with that Peter that, that post would slap him up. He couldn't run him to a PJ. I mean, Siaga couldn't run him to a PJ. Not no wrong with the system. The thing that is most wrong with the country is the lack of opposition representation. And Uno want to move him, Uno want to, Uno want to elevate him from that when can manage when mash up. Eh? Uno, he fucked that up to I hell, Uno want to promote uh, Can I say that on YouTube? My God. And then Uno want to promote him? Huh? How does that work? Uno want to promote him? Let's look at more things that he has done. Every single division that there is a rice candidate that you, the PNP people, never have a say in. On the door vote for them. On the can't vote for them. That's, that's rewarding them. They are rise so high with Mark Golden that their re reward is to support him. So nobody need to ask Uno if you don't want him to be on the councillor or she to be on the councillor. Nobody no business with Uno. And them them are put in because them support the rise man. And and he reward them for supporting him. They're not busy with you. And now they want to ask you to go out and go vote for them. Una una idiot. Una idiot. No, me, uh, uh, me ask you for an idiot. Huh? Look at the Georgia division. Comrade Correll, Davis. Work that division. Spend years working that division. Build an organization. Build up workers. Walk and build up ourselves and build the, 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 the division. And then lo and behold, Mr. Sital in Portmore or somewhere there. The GLP don't want him. Them tell him they don't want him run back. Because they're a good representative. Good representative. And Norman Scott at the behest and him can, them can do these things because them are risers. And Mark now got trouble them because I'm at a rice pass. Well, I'm a bunch of that rice pass. But Mark. And then remove the young lady who built the division and got the approval of the delegates to be their representative. And then remove her and give it to a turn back labor right and say, him is now the PNP candidate. And who will talk about make a put things aside? Then they kind of treachery and betrayal. Then betray the young lady. It's a betrayal of the young lady, a PNP young woman. Then they are work the seat. Build an organization. Hustling and bustling about to find a little money to do some things that help people. If you never knew something that girl did. In the short space of time that she was there. I would just come and say, you now run. The people want you, but we don't want you. The people want you, but we don't care about the people and you. We are geared to this man here. Because I who you want. And cast her aside. To ask him about that. Go ask him about that. Huh? Go and ask him about that. Bujo is a young youth from outer. Nine miles. That's where Bujo come from. Somebody, if you correct me if anybody know other. Now, Bujo is a youth I know well. Bujo was out there in 2016 when we were running the local government elections. Bujo is one of them youth where. You can't give him fifty thousand dollars for theme area, and every striking smile you meet, tell us that they get something out of the fifty thousand dollars. There's nobody to tell that they never get nothing. Yeah man, we did that thing. Yeah man, we did we did get that. Yeah, we did meet. Then I want to tell us that get it, but them so we meet. Ah oh, yeah man, yeah man, yeah man. <laughs> Butu and the people of Dallas Division calling for Butu. Would you them want to be the candidate for the Dallas division? But the rise boss them say no. We are getting to the mania who's a riser, who is well known in the community, he's a footballer. But him not, he not the politics too tough. Him not have the political um, blood in him. Him not have the bug not bite him. So him not know what to do. And then gave the man the seat. And make him hang on to the seat 
until two days before nomination. Two days before nomination, they were for nominate Bujo. And who knows? Where are we going to know? Who knows? Who knows? Listen, the surface of what they have done have not been scratched yet. Bujo was the youth the people have called for. But because Bujo close to Kani, Consuela. They won't give it. The people want Bujo. The people love Bujo. Who not give a shit about the people? So we take it away and give it to the man who support Uno without knowing what kind of political game he bring to the thing. And you give him and he couldn't cut it. Him slide. Him flame out. And two days before nomination, Kani, um, Telfa, um, Pat, um, she name um, the former councillor, Pat, they have to rope in Bujo and start hustle some local money and hustle some local things and go nominate Bujo. Now, I am thinking to myself, having worked that division in 2016, that division turned out some votes that had Mrs. Owens worried about three o'clock she fly out there. That's what we did. And Bujo, had he had that seat two years before, Mrs. Owens would be scrambling. Kabuji is a well of youth. But no, don't forget to them rise, friend. We are rise so high. Then can't see them. And Buju now, but thank God him have Kani. Thank God him have Pat, Pat, Pat Morgan. Thank God him have Tell for out there to help him. And God's willing, I'm going to go out there and give him a strength. Walk up and down with him, look away, go, go, go to my old aunts, them where people came out because me come. And me have big up myself, yes. People come out to vote when me come. But I don't accept that, I don't know that. Would I like Bujo make a good showing in the Dallas division? So that is what they did. That's what they did to Comrade Correll. That's what they did to Bujo. In Clarendon. Down in um, Church Pen. You remember that night? When Mark left on the mic and said, Wow, ah. Me and Mark Wolf and me the boss now. Uh, 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 and me I run things now. So, if anybody knows about the Mark Wolf and change, you can go on about the business. Uh, Come in and need none of you. That night? That night, he installed one young woman named Natalie Ho. And the night when he was installing her, people in that room grumbling and mumbling and up, 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 objecting. But they don't care because she was one of their main supporters. She get a reward for helping them to destroy the People's National Party. I don't want PNP people to come reward them people. There. Reward Judas. Stop him in the middle of the road and say, Do on yourself, we're going to make your mayor. Do on yourself, we're going to make your counselor. He's a Judas. Do on yourself. And we're going to reward you. The one PNP people can reward Natalie who who the people they never want but because she's a riser she gets rewarded there's this young woman who's going to do in the park young lawyer lawyer Michelle Thomas she never faced the delegates them either all know the delegates are doing the park though don't get to say, well, we like you, or we don't like you. Them just install her. I don't ask to do any part of people if you just spoke up for fear. Huh? Who do not get this? Who do not get this all now as to how this works? No, no, no. So there is she. There's Natalie Ho. There is the one. They got Claremont. Baby mother number four. I think I didn't can be baby mother number four that. Yeah. Miss Katie and Carty. She. Nobody selected her. Them just near her. The people of Claremont never get to have a say in it. Nobody else couldn't put up themselves and say, me want it because they name me baby mother. Because I'm baby mother. If he's my right, she arise. Nobody else can come in at it. 
when all the bad years come to about them want to see it. And she I get it. But you know want the bad years want to know what ask about it. Who don't want to come out come vote for her. Then there is well, I'm talking about Mr. Sittal already. Then, then there's the water race division. The fabulous Miss Nicola Hamilton. Oh, yeah. The one with the people, them make up nice and them want her. And Mr. Dayton said to her, Where is she when I get? She, I eat that. She's a candidate. She's a candidate. She when I get. And the workers, them, See Michelle in, in auto race. Tell Michelle, say, Well, Michelle can go on and be the candidate. We'll soon get to the party. Eh? About the PNP workers, then. <laughs> Why not with them? Yeah? So she, there, there it is. Then, there is. I don't have the names, eh, but I will give you some divisions. That the PNP people and delegates did not have a say. In who these representatives are. The Palmer's Cross Division, the Rocky Point Division, the Mocker Division, I mean, all them people over Noko, Chapitan Division, the Denby Division, the Mapen East Division, the Yorktown Division, I think Yorktown is Purcell, and the Riches, Riches Division. Yorktown is Purcell, and I hope Purcell win. But look for one or two. Look for one or two. The man have some woman in him house, or some man in him house, and do a video and take video of him big long dick. Yeah. So what? Him not rape no underage picnic. Person and a pedophile. People do sex tape all the time. All the big stars in America have a minute sex tape of them revealed. Because people feel kinky. I only deny the man the representation of the people. That person is an excellent counselor. That's why the PLP people put on the marriage and walk with him. We don't have no respect for people. I don't want people to come out, come reward, you know. Come say, yeah, thank you. Huh? The reason why, I don't want to hear me. Because Dayton can be so not win all the councils. And him either uh, engage in a voodoo magic or, or something else. No, no. But him say about win. Him winning everywhere. Everywhere him sound like Donald Trump. Him winning everywhere. The reason why there is an 85% chance that the PMP is going to lose the Westmoreland um, Council is a simple one. Very simple reason. The two councillors that jump ship and go join the JLP. What caused that? Them are here is a war. They may have nothing with him. He may have nothing with them. He and is hard to deal with. He is not a man for call and meet and say, come here go drink. Me may talk about it. Me know you don't like me. Me know you have issues with me. But boy, I want to do this. I want you to help me. Not that type. He's not humble at all. He not have no humility. Yeah, there's not a humility. But then the matter reaches to the leader of the party. The leader of the party who is supposed to be looking after everybody's interest. And two of your sitting councillors come to you and say, we have, we have issues. And your argument to them was to fuck off. Lord, I hope YouTube not went by me for all this. That was your argument. I am repeating it. I mean, I will repeat that part. But that is why I tell the councillors that to F off. Yeah, there's just a candidate if you don't like it. F off. And now, after you tell your two sitting councillors them that, and then jump ship, you have two new smarty now, and you're going to ask people to come out, come vote for your two new smarty. After you tell the two sitting man them to F off. What, what kind of logic is that? Who are going to ask people to reward you? Because it's not the man that we are, we are going to run, you know. Are you, Mark Golden, who don't want to reward him for running away the two councils there because he is the cause of it? 
give me the cause of it. And now, poor Mr. Littleton, who is the candidate for the Grand Jill Division, is now going to have to face Labour Right and Jimmy. <laughs> and Jimmy, talking about a whole heap of things. About a whole heap of things. And one of the reasons why so many candidates are going to face the backlash of the people. The only reason is Mark Golden. So Jimmy say I run independent. So I could talk about the independent spoilers. Because they are independent for money, for power, and for revenge. Most of them is about money, power, and revenge. So yeah. So let's look at Tiffin Liar Ugly Lydia. Let me repeat that. Tiffin Liar Ugly Lydia. And I promise you, Lydia Richards, that the six people that accompany you to that polling station will not be voting for you. I want you to take the word for it, Lydia Richards. That them come because you give them the money. Things rough. And when people ask if they should go, my advice was, yeah, take the money. Come and nominate her. They not vote for you. Because you, Lydia, is a wicked, vicious, thiefing, liar, ugly woman who forgot your yard. And somebody like you, at your age, them should tie you up in your bed. Your family should tie you down in your bed. Or tie you in the town square where they pit them with your teacher at the school that you were principal for. Let them pass by and slap slap you for your bad behavior. Now, this is a sitting councillor. The sitting councillor for the Bensington Division. And where you hear me, PMP people. She has been there, well, maybe about 20 years, I don't know, about then. She's the main architect. Of the war against Lisa Hanna. She, she's the one who challenged Lisa Hanna for the NPC, which is her right. But she is the main architect backed up by the Burks that has caused the constituency of South East St. Anne to fall into disarray. She has been the thorn in Lisa Hanna's skin. Side? Yeah. The thorn in Lisa Hanna's side. She, Lisa, um, Lydia Richards. The people of Bensonton finally discovered who she is, what she is, and what she has been doing with their money. The money that she collected to look after the division. And, and we tell them about it, but then we want to repeat the things that you do with the money. Yeah, my man, buy man, can a man no want them, can they look good, so they buy man. Now for my man, you know, for man to come sleep with them, because they don't look good. They ugly and they don't look good. She tell the people that's what she do. And then, the people got together and said to the party and to her, we're done with you. It's the people here. And Alisa move her. And Alisa move her. And a Dr. Russell move her. And the party move her. The people, it's the people move her. And so we're done with you. And the people move her. And the people select a new, a new candidate for the Benson Tan Division. And Lisa and I go walk with him and make him wapply and I'll put this old woman in outer misery. And after the people rejected you, run you as a widow, why you? You got the bright idea that you were run as independent? Your sister fool left you. He voted as a Benson Dan. No, your sister is woman taking over idiot. Who no run her way? Who no want her because she teeth and she lie and she ugly? And she take no money by man and get kicked back from projects and who so no want her no more who no select a new person and then she no run as independent and I ask her to vote for her you know so I'm not going to that because you know country people but me know so I'm not going to show them so I'm not idiot so in other words with that yeah Purcell went independent because they treat him unfairly and I hope Purcell win and Lothian cousins you mean you need to back the hell off and leave Purcell alone. I like you know, Lothian. 
Well, leave personal alone. Leave personal alone, man. Because Uno did him wrong. The man do a sex tape. Uno is not 10-year-old pit in it. Uno is not 12-year-old. Uno talk to Dame Campbell about, about, about them things. Not because he never do a sex tape. He never do a whole sex thing with underage pit in Go talk to him. Not talk to the man see for. The man representing people. See him people that just up in the arms. None of them can do that. None of them couldn't do that. What him can do. So Purcell, I'm with you, my brother. Now, Jimmy, and I'm trying not to laugh because when I hear this thing yesterday, I feel the whole day I'm just up dead with laugh. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> Jimmy went on radio and Jimmy said, <laughs> Jimmy said, when, when you hear that, is Mark Golden going to run for leader? Him called Peter Bunting and him said to Peter Bunting, Where Mark I go? Won't I go with Mark? And Peter Bunting said to Jimmy, Don't worry. When you see Mark, you see me. When you see me, you see Mark. I am Mark and Mark is me. <laughs> Oh, I did. That's what Peter Bunty tell you. Jimmy. Jimmy said, call Bunty. I said, Bunty said, who would I go with Mark? And Mark, and, and, and Bunty said, don't worry. Mark is me, and me is Mark. When you say Mark, you say me. When you say me, you say Mark. So don't worry. I am Mark. I never know him was Mark. And Mark is me. That makes sense now. The whole damn thing makes sense now. It never makes sense before. It makes sense now. <laughs> it makes sense now. Now, in my mind, when I hear it, I wish to God that Jimmy did joke. Because if Jimmy did joke, it's so meta. Can you imagine that's all if Jimmy did joke? Seriously. <laughs> so Jimmy decides uh, he might run as independent too. Now Jimmy is almost 80. And he did left and go flirt with the Jamaica Labour Party for a little bit, for five minutes and come back. But Bunting tell him, don't worry man, when you see Mark, you see me. I am Mark, Mark is me, Mark is me and I am Mark. <laughs> oh Jesus help us. God so loved the world, he gave us his only begotten son. Don't worry man, when you see Mark, you see me. When you say me, you say Mark. I am Mark, and Mark is me. Damn, the thing makes sense now. <laughs> but anyway, Jimmy is going to run as an independent. So let me just go to very quickly for you how that is probably going to pan out and how not that. I am guessing and surmising that with all of this, the GLP just might win the West Midland Parish Council. So let me do Jimmy first. Jimmy got 892 votes in 2016. Follow me, you know. Come in on Matt Marin. I am I'd never ever pretend to be. We can count, but I'm Matt Marin. Jimmy got 892 votes in 2016. All right? He won the seat by 42 votes. Una right? Write it down here. <laughs> 782 new people have been added to the list since 2016. In the PMP enclaves. Because I'm telling you this, you know. When it comes to enumeration, don't make nobody fool in here. Most of these people don't have a clue. The electoral office print the numbers, give them the numbers, they accept the numbers. But they have no idea about its construction or its cause. Them don't know how it come by. Them don't know who these people are. Because them don't enumerate nobody. But in this Jimmy's division, in the PMP enclaves, of the 782 voters, new voters are to the list, at 28% that we calculated represent PMP enclaves. 
and that's 218 votes from the 782. Now, I am figuring, based on Jimmy's history, that a good part of this 218 might very well be his activity. So you take that 218 from the 782 left 564. So let's give the GLP the same 218. Let's say that Jimmy get 200, um, the PLP get 218 and the GLP get 218. So you know what, 346 vote left to split between them. Let's give Jimmy for his long service and his, and his, um, his stewardship of the grading division. Let's give him 25% of the 892 that he got in 2016. All right, let's give him 25% of that. And he'll know the rest of voters are. And the rest of it are split between the PMP candidate, Mr. Littleton, and the JLP candidate. Chances are the PMP lose the seat. So, what does it, um, Mr. Littleton do? I like Mr. Littleton. I, sur I surmise that he might very well be a riser. But based on what the PMP people tell me, I like Mr. Littleton. Jimmy not going to win. Jimmy not going to win. So it's going to be up to Mr. Littleton and his team to go find that 782 new voters. Go find the 218 in the PMP enclaves and um, take it from there. But Jimmy did a wrong thing too, which you shouldn't do. Because you're bitter and you're almost 80 years old. And a man like you and of your stature should not belittle yourself in such a way that me have to come on pan the, pan the live, you know. Come on, um, come defend Mr. Littleton a little bit. Because you're on the radio, I tell people say Mr. Littleton is a, is a deportee, a drug dealer and a deportee. You shouldn't do that, Jimmy. You really and truly shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Mr. Littleton friends them very, very upset about it. You shouldn't do that. Mr. Littleton was deported in his teenage years, maybe about 18, 19. And it was for ganja. Not hard drugs. Ganja. And that was some years ago. And he deserves a chance again to do him thing. Can never go to jail for nothing. They never lock him up. They never charge him. They just send him ass back in the yard for some ganja. And I surmise that back in those, uh, it was back in those days when you, 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 you probably get a speeding ticket. And, and, and the, them says they have some ganja and decide to deport you. Them time now in the US used to do them foolish just, just deport people because they see with a look of a ganja. But Jimmy, Jimmy is a member of the Rum Drinkers Association. Kind of like a disgraced member of the Rum Drinkers Association. This me, disgraced members of the Rum Drinkers Association are people who drink and piss up themselves a road. Yeah. And drop down a ground. Um, lie down on sidewalk. Those are disgraced members of the Rum Drinkers Association. I know I'm a member of the Rum Drinkers Association, not a disgraced member of the Rum Drinkers Because if I'm going to drink and go on with things, it's a hot in my yard and I'm a gazebo in my yard. Not a road. So Jimmy's a disgraced member of the Rum Drinkers Association. And Jimmy is also a disgraceful member of the Rum Drinkers Association. Then you make me have to come talk to them something because you're going to take liberty of the man, a do man, man. Huh? And you get drunk and lie down on the road of foreign and all them something and people have to pick you up and all them something. So, so Jimmy, you're not a nice person. And when you're drunk, don't forget, Jimmy, that when you're drunk, you know, salve and everywhere else, you make everybody know that you want to run again so you can get all of the money them for, for go with because you don't have nothing. You make them things are known to people. That people are listen to you, Jimmy. All I'm saying is that you live in a glass house, don't throw no stone. So he has two stone from Mr. Littleton. You could have gone up on the interview as a statesman, as a senior man. I said, boy, you don't like run back. I think I have served my people, I'm a people people that want me back. You go up and go try to yeah, yeah, try for, for, um, knock up the little young man who not trouble you. Go knock up Mark and Ian and them trouble you. You knock up a young fella. And I call up a name about things. And incidentally, the GLP candidate name also called in drugs and whatever else. And quite frankly, I don't care. Make it plainly known already. So I don't care about nothing with the JP. Who representing them and what them doing and what Andrew Oles do. Andrew Oles just make sure my garbage collected and me and him good. My garbage get collected, me and him good. And if I see the garbage truck and I send him a, a WhatsApp about it and him act on it, me and him good. So I don't know what Mr. Oles. Mr. Oles is a mark problem. Mark is the one who betrayed and sabotaged the party 
and do him work for Judas, Judas Ray into the party to take over leadership of the party and become opposition leader. Mr. Owen, this is his problem. Not we. The resistance. All six of us still standing. Strong. We have a problem. My problem. So, Jimmy, you're wrong. So, you need to back off, Jimmy, and, and all of that. But let us look at the two. The two seats. The other, the other two seats. I'm not looking at. I'm not looking at. Um, I'm not going to look at Mr. James. Um. It look, I, I, um, I doubt Mr. James can uh, can win, and I and and, and, and I don't know. I, 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 it would have been nice. It would have been sweet revenge to see Miles and James win them seat um, against the backlash of what because of what Mark Golden did, because of how Mark Golden handled that situation. It would be sweet sweet revenge for the two of them to win. Mr. James got 1,058 vote. Um, um, the, 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 the other time, um, in 2016, so he won by 519 votes. Um, there are 949 new voters, 45% of that 949 are in PMP areas. I don't know how much of a good counselor Mr. James was that him could actually go, go, go knock off. Um, he would need to knock off at least 30% from that 1,058 that he got in, um, in 2016 and an next 30% from the 948 and um, unless, unless everybody has to be scattered in order for him to actually win the seat. So I don't know. I am going to do a, a deeper look at Mr. James' numbers. I'm going to go back and look at the, the other places where the other 55% um, uh, of new voters are. But look at Miles. Miles look like he can win the seat. Miles won by 142 votes in 2016. 142 votes. There are 1,171 new voters. I want to make the camera on the tag him, make him listen to this. Miles responsible for the enumeration of that 1,171 voters and the new voters on the list. Miles, it was two miles work that at least 48% of them got enumerated. Two miles. So if him pay for transportation, carry them feed them, buy them drink, get them enumerated, and now, and he was a good counsellor, and now he was run for the JLP, and uh, people are really, really committed to Mark Golden, PNP, what to stop him from going to get them? Now, nah? what to stop him from going to get that? Anyway, it looks to me that that Miles can take the seat, and it will be sweet revenge because of what Mark Golden did. And if the PNP lose the Westmoreland Parish Council, it is solely because of Mark Jefferson Golden. Him is the one that set them up to lose the council because of his actions and what he said to the two sitting PNP councillors and how he acted and how he responded to the problems down there. Him and him alone, he and he wouldn't get no blame. It would be Mark. It will be Mark. I got some calls after I did the voice note and after I did the last live about um, St. James. And they asked me to revisit St. James. And so I decided that I'm going to revisit some seats, not a lot. I just want to run through a couple, a couple for you um, in, um, in St. James. Just, just revisit a couple. There are some people in St. James who feel that Kenroy Gordon in Catadupa has a very good chance of winning. There are some people who feel that Bernard, who lives in Flankers, come from Flankers, very popular, could also win Flankers. There are some people who believe that Bali would have been able to make a run of it if he was earlier in the game and probably beat the deputy mayor. I am of the view that Jody and Kalamati can really, really make a go at this. And I was heartened today to see that Damien was up there with her, walking with her. And I hope that that had an effect. And Jody, you know what to do. 
I walk you through it already. And I'm telling you again, because I know you're watching. You know what to do. Keep doing it. Don't stop doing it. Doing that. Go to them. Write down your names, them. Write down your number. Just keep doing what you and I discuss. And um and pray. The summertime division of this guy named Michael Allen was regarded as a as a popular guy. He was a sound man. So I'm popular. Now I have had experience with people who are popular and people who come with a certain thing to them name and it don't work out. It just don't pan out. So I, I am I am skeptical um about um this guy that 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 um is um is in um the summertime division. The same problem that is plaguing Portmore is the same problem that is plaguing PMP people across the country. St. James, Clarendon, St. Catherine, Manchester, everywhere, Portland, St. Mary, everywhere, except St. Thomas. Everywhere. Worker problems. People are calling people from all over the country. People are calling people are foreign for them to come home, come work, the indoor agent. People are calling people from one parish to the next parish. I'm going to put you up. Come work the indoor agent for me. Them not no workers. The PMP candidates don't have any workers. Them don't have any experienced, committed workers. Them can find people to go work, which is different from having workers. I wouldn't dream, and Patrick Roberts wouldn't matter out himself to just go find people put over my mother cluster. Mm -mm. That's why it's the cream of the crop, indoor agent. And them they are going there. The cream of the crop. Indoor agents them. We don't call nobody and tell nobody to come. We have indoor agents them. Experience. Committed. Trusted. Know the system. Know the electoral laws. Know how to behave. Know the voters. And those are the indoor agents. Them they have none. None of them. In Portmore I'd like to make an exception. I'll recover him workers. He does. I'll recover him workers. I'm sure he does. I'm hard to see Lisa walk with the authentic PMP. I'm going to make it clear. I'm going to want this to make it clear. I'm going to say, Lisa knows this. Somebody now to tell her. Say, so all her walks. They're busy with them and look at them game seat. And um, I'm probably going to do something feet and walk with some risers. But Lisa and I is under no obligation. None at all. Zero to walk with no riser. Don't walk with no riser candidate, Lisa. Them ask you, tell them no. Mm -mm. You not walk with no traitors. You not back up no traitors and back up no Judas. You don't reward traitors. You don't reward Judas. Because God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. And Judas betrayed him. So Lisa Anna, she walk with Swaby. She walk with Alric. Me so Lisa Anna, did a run, a jog over Alric and people that jog behind her. What a leader we can run. <laughs> oh, what a leader we can run and people that run behind them. A leader that we want. A leader that people respect. A leader we can go walk because as soon as I did Mark Golden, as soon as I did not Mark Golden, throughout all elections, history of elections in this country, in the local government elections, it is usually the local government candidate and them MP on the posters. And in the case of a, a local government candidate who don't have an MP, um, and, and in some instances, there's a local government candidate and the party leader, I don't see my going to find no poster. None. I was hoping, I was hoping that Dennis Garden and the young lady, Wynet, would put, put Peter Phillips on their poster. Because that can help them. Even though Peter Phillips numbers went so low in 2020, him not going back, him leaving the politics, could actually help the candidates in East Central St. Andrew, except Sora Gonzalez. So let's put Mark Golden on fear poster. But Dennis and Wynet, who should consider putting Peter Phillips on the poster. Let the people them see that. Because that could help. Could help to bring out to bring out to bring out voters. 
and I know that we don't have no, no workers' problem. But across the country, there are workers' problem. When I ask people to go out and tell me what is the feeling going on there, how is the feeling, how is the voter enthusiasm, which voters are more enthusiastic. And I fully understand what Dayton Campbell is doing. Fully understand what he's doing. He knows I'm losing, but he can't tell them say I lose. He might do the same thing in reverse what they did to Peter Phillips in 2020. They go out there and them send it out in the universe that Peter Phillips can't win. And by doing that, PNP people stay at home. By doing that, them ensure and they were effective because Bunting spent his money, Mark Golden spent his money. Mark Golden was out there doing video endorsing candidates. Mark Golden was the leader of the PNP, you know. The endorsement of candidates in that official capacity is the pur purview of the party leader. But Mark Golden was doing videos endorsing rice candidates. And them said it out that Peter Phillips can't win. Him can't win. Him not meshing with the young people them. Him, 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 him can't win. Him dead. Bunting him. him. Him just not touching. Him not in touch. That's what one, you want to at him. You know? Him not in touch. Yet I was Peter Phillips was in touch a man in the air that touch your son. Yeah. He's not in touch. So then go, go tell people that in 2020. So now Dayton Campbell is trying a reverse psychology. I don't know. Oh, we're winning here. I we're winning there. I we're winning everywhere. We're winning everywhere. And we are you two men. Discover that. We're winning. We win in there, so we win in there, so we win in there, so and that is a strategy I'm using to see if that could get the PAP people them out. But Dayton Camber is a nitwit and numbskull, knows nothing about political organization and politics, knows nothing about election day ground operation. If he did, I would go out and chat that foolishness because may I tell you this Dayton Camber and Mark Golden. A good chunk of PMP people now come out come vote for the rice candidate. They will go out and vote for the authentic PMP candidates. But the authentic PMP candidates are outnumbered by the rice candidates. Oh yeah. But region three are go out and vote for them candidates. And the and, and, and the authentic PMP candidates them are go out there. The problem with places like um particular St. James. It's not so much the candidates are not good and couldn't challenge the GLP and candidates. Them. Some of them are, but the problem is the numbers are against them. They never do no numeration. None of them participated in the numeration. There is um, the, the, the candidate for, for South Spring Division who was a council and got expelled from the council. Won his seat in 2016 by one, one number vote. And did absolutely no numeration, put him a run back because he's a riser. While there was another candidate who would have won that seat, me not, if not, but about it. And people would have lined up to come give him support, and he would have workers. He would have workers. I mean, I'm going to train him, go train them for him. But no, I'm going to give it back to the, to the former councillor because he made a rise high. It was really rising high, high like a drunk rock. No disrespect to you, my friend, really. But um, I don't know if all that ever going to work out. The voter enthusiasm is pretty low. It's not high. What you saw on nomination day is excitement. People are going to come up for the excitement. What you saw on nomination day are the sure voters. And them that. The sure, sure divisional voters. That big crowd, for example, with Kurt Wall, that's a constituency crowd. When you break that down into division, it's a small group of people in each of those divisions. That's the sure votes. And I want to tell you that if things are going right for them on that day, somebody might not even show up. Somebody might still vex about that nation, they are still not show up. All kinds of things get up. My politics. So that is what happened. I looked at Mario Mitchell crowd. And I know him of the numbers. Him of the numbers. The question is, can he get them out this time? That's the question. Him of the numbers. 
a good chunk of it above the GLP. But with their, all them rise activities and them rise boss losing the PLP seat to a nice young lady who kick him ass from here to Timbuktu. I don't know if them going to come out. But Jimmy said, when you see Mark, you see me. I am Mark. Mark is me. Mark is me and I am Mark. So when you see me, you see Mark. Oh yeah. Now we wait for laugh. That, 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 I can't get over that one. So there is that. Now, people also say, boy, a time for to stop resist and make go win this thing. But I tell you no, and I tell you again. This thing on us, so we must stop resist. I'm going to win. I'm going to go and go with it. I'm going to go and go with it. Because I'm not with it full. I'm not helping. I'm not helping. I'm not helping. I'm not I'm not helping. I'm not stop. Because my job is to ensure that the voters of this country understand that if they think and do all this bad, try it. And we know the voters in this country, they have a bad history of wanting to try somebody and give that person their try. If you don't want to give the son of a slave owner or chapless hustler a try, then Jamaicans, this is fool thing. I can only provide you with the information that I think you need to understand that that would not be a good decision. That would not be a good decision. When I was in Papi in a nomination day, I didn't talk about the voice note. When I look at PNP people in a green shirt behind Venetia um, Phillips, I didn't bother making it register in my head. It's like glancing and glance away. Glancing and glance away. Glancing and glance away. PNP people felt comfortable to put on a green shirt that says Venetia Phillips. And go to the supporter. PMP people. Darrington Ferguson had a good PMP crowd. We were behind his motorcade at one point and behind covered little motorcade at one point. Good crowd. Very good motorcade in crowd. Very good motorcade in a nominating crowd. The ground game. The ground game and and uh, you see, somebody like Sandy Solid up in Cedar Valley. Sandy worked that seat, you know. Sandy left America and Sandy come home and Sandy worked that seat. Sandy put in the numeration, she put in the work, she put in everything. Everything. And my only advice to her was simple. You have it now. It's the ground game on election morning starting at 5.30. That is going to determine who come out victorious. The St. Thomas Parish Council was never ours. We didn't win that. We got that to a, con a, 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 con a configuration of, of um, events. Two people died. And the man with the most votes get to be mayor. So it was never ours. Can we keep it? Can we actually hold on to it? I don't know. I would love that to happen, but I don't know. I really don't know. I'm going out to St. Thomas though. I'll be able to tell you when I go out there if it's going to happen, yes or no. Mark Golden understands full well that everything that he has done to reach the pinnacle of power in the People's National Party, he did it through chicanery, dishonesty, jackassery, judasery. He got there because God so loved this world that he gave us his only begotten son and Judas betrayed him and then go hang himself with him 30 pieces of silver. He named him on. Him who allowed for him 30 pieces and go hang himself. He couldn't survive that. Nobody was going to reward him. Nobody should reward Mark Golden for what he did to the PMP. And I'm a walk, we'll talk about time come. Time come for what? We're ready, we're ready for what? 
I can't answer them question there. Eh? We're not gonna win this, we're not gonna win that. And when you go to vote, Jamaican people, I want you to remember some things. I want you to remember, I want to remind you of some things that you need to put it on the head before you cast those votes. Them give candidates to the people who the people didn't want. That's the first thing. They never listen to the people. Take sleep, mark debt. They never listen to the people. The young lady, the wonderful Miss Hamilton, no auto race, tell them that she can't help nobody now. When she wins, she will see what she can do. Who no take sleep, mark debt. Them take away the division from the truth from mom. Um, Come here, Davis. Corel, nice, young, black, beautiful Jamaican PNP woman. And give it to the labor right man. Who the labor right them said I don't want no more. Who no take sleep, ma, death. Watch what they have done. Not what they say. Just watch what they do. Ma Peter Bunting challenged Peter Phillips for the leadership of the People's National Party in 2019. It was his right to do so. The PAP constitution allow him that, give him that right. Give every member that right to challenge somebody for a position. It does. And after he challenged him, and he lost, he proceeded to divide the party. Take the 49% and start undermine and sabotage and just want to pay things to make the party lose the election and then after that them set up bogus groups and buy everybody 15 and 20 thousand dollars so mark golden could be leader and the pnp delegates them sell out them legacy them heritage to mark golden the slave owner's son them sell it out and then he become leader. And his first act was to meet with the council. Then we are beat on Lisa Hannah and tell them something to run back. We will take sleep, mark death. And after him do that, he proceed to start attacking and running out people. They attack Philip Paulwell. They consistently going after Lisa Hannah and Philip Paulwell, Damian Crawford, Raymond Price. They target people who are talented and bright and shine. The people who make our party look good. The people who make our country look good. Then him take the seat from Lisa Anna. Say him no want to run back there. And then him come from national TV. Come say him offer her another seat. Divisive and cruel and wicked, devious man. And him who no want to swap. Who no want to swap, Mr. Wallace, for him? Him go up on TV in a crowd of people. And him say, you know, come up on my train, go about business. I don't need you, know. I go about my business. Him tell the two counselors who are having problems with the man who them put in there. And him look at him and tell him, F off. He never said, come sit down and talk about it. Him say, I, I, Ian is a candidate. If you don't like it, F off. You don't take sleep, man, then. Him hide up all his money and him assets them all over places. So the Jamaican, um, what do you call it again? What do you call um, place name? The integrity commission can't find it. You know, take sleep, Mark Death. This man is no good. And it means this party no good. When somebody like Maxine Henry Wilson, our first and only female general secretary, bright, brilliant woman, when she can come in public and say that the party cannot deliver all the things that we have promised the people, we are going to water. Well, Mr. Warmington is my hero today. Mr. Warmington is my hero. How do you go to water? If him win, the councillor, I talk to him about go to water. If him win, I'm going to talk to Warmington. And Warmington, I'm going to give him water for good. 
It might sound crude, but why am I right? I'm with you. And that, you have broke my promise, people, water. You in government? You have, you have water tank and pipe? You in charge of water? You have promised people water? You in charge of light and road fixtures? Are you in charge of them there? Or are some other people? And you go there, promise PMP people, I promise the voters them, boy, you're bring water and you're bring light. Are you in charge of crap? Somebody just licking for that, trust me. No violence, please. No, don't lick it. Just make me right. That, Mark Golding, the leader of the PMP, the local government election is announced. And a couple of minutes after the elections are announced, the news media found Mr. Golden and put a mic in front of him and asked him a question. The local government election has been, I don't remember what the question asked, but I imagine it must have been. Well, the local government election has been announced and um, it is set um, where you feel. That damn idiot, that buffoon, that stupid, white, raw, lying, scheming son of a slave owner stand up in front of the camera and say well we're glad it called because if it never called we're going to take some actions that we're going to carry him to court what the the elections are known that you are talking about it glad it called because you're going to take some actions if they never call it you get up them for say nothing to tell the country Nothing for said to the country. The elections are known to Mike and a camera in front of you. We are glad that the election has been announced. The PMP is going to go out there, we're going to campaign, we're going to talk to the voters, we're going to tell them that we are the, we, we, they must vote for us. The man said glad. Because if it them never do it, it may have a real jail on them. That's what he had to say. And if sorrow gets them come around, we're ready. Time come. But them can't tell you for what? I don't know for what they're ready and what time come for. So I want to listen to my Jamaican voters. Because I don't finish with them. In 13 days time, the power that these people have, all of them, every councillor, every mayor across this country, the power that they have is you give them. You gave them that power. You empowered the mayor, you empowered your councillor, you gave them the power that they have. It is time that you as Jamaican voters who, who, who deliver that power to these people. It is time that you behave like you're powerful. Stop behaving like you're an afterthought. Stop behaving like you have some kind of obligation to him because he's in a green shirt or to her because she's in an orange shirt. Start behaving like you have some authority and power and control in the direction of your community, in the interest and safety and prosperity. Lord, may I use prosperity. Yes, prosperity and progress and everything that is good. Did I just talk about Mr. Oli's talking point? That sounds kind of weird. But those are words. Because I do believe. Think about the interests of your family. The interest of your community. Think about it. What is best for them? Prosperity is not something that is on its own. Neither is progress. PMP start them the word there. Them the buzzword that PMP start with. GSP never know them the word there. But think, you, the Jamaican voters, this power that you have. That power where you step in that police station and make that X. That is not something that nobody gives you. That is your inalienable right given by God to select the people, to elect the people who you want to represent you. Look at them. Vet them. Listen to them. Ask questions about them. Don't go run out of the damn shirt. If you get the money for go vote a certain way, then by all means go on. Now I beat you up on that. But think. Think. It is time for you, the Jamaican voters, to think. What you doing? Stop with the emotional thing. 
Voting is not only emotional, it should also be intellectual. Voting should be a conscious decision, something that you think about. I enjoy when there's an election in the US. I have the, the correspondents that go around to diners and to barns and to, to towns, to, to state fairs and talk to people. I enjoy listening to people say, yeah, well, um, I know of, of, of um, 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 Ms. So-and-so, but yeah, I mean, she voted against the act to, to, to send more fertilizer to farmers. I know Ms. Mr. So-and-so, oh, I don't like him. He talks too much and he never does anything. Voters think and know the people who are asking them to vote for them. You, the Jamaican people, only need to think. Therefore, if Mr. James and Mr. Miles have been good representatives, then by all means vote for them. Why not if they have been representing your interests? Don't look upon them shirt. Don't reward Mark Golden and Dayton Camber. Mark Golden is a scheming, lying son of a slave owner. The Judas. The traitor. Peter Bunting. Judas traitor. Dayton Camber. Judas traitor pedophile. And I remember, and let me remind you of one other thing. One other thing. Before um, I wrap this up. A leader is supposed to be the conduit between all the forces that are war. The leader is supposed to be the person who solves that. I can't imagine having a problem in the wild and going to PJ Patterson about it. And PJ said, that don't sound like something serious, Comrade Cross. I think that you guys need to speak to the party chairman and Dr. Lawrence. I will go to Bobby, I will go to Vin, and the problem solved. That's how leaders behave. Mark Golden, the leader of the PMP. And I'm going back to this because this is one thing I want to remind you of. You, the Jamaican voters, where I am concerned, and I'm not mad, because something had to happen in order for me to carry out this mission. Something had to happen, and I guess that is it. I'm not mad. I will always remain a PMP. And as long as Patrick Roberts do what need to do, and is accessible, I will vote for him. When I reported Dayton Campbell to the People's National Party, I do so through a one page letter with about one paragraph. I sent the letter to, the, to, to John Jr. And I said in the letter, Dayton Campbell is a serial pedophile. John Jr. called me on the phone the Sunday. I was spoke for about 27 to 28 minutes. And the phone him keeps saying, well, Karen, these are serious things. Very serious things. These allegations are serious. I say, yes, they are. These things are serious. Yes, they are. I was poor. I expected him. The only expectation I had was for him to go talk to some other people, and the other people, them and them, will come together and they're going to call me Monday morning or Tuesday and say, Bring the evidence. Bring it, come. I could say, Bring one of the young lady, come. I could see if we can solve this behind the scenes. Because my letter never got in the public, it was a private letter, just me to him. So I was following the rules, following the process, by not going public with it, but talking to a senior member of the PMP about it. Chairman of the disciplinary committee. Couldn't think of anybody else except John Jr. Um, to talk to if I was going to talk to somebody else. I could talk to um, KD too, if KD was the president of the chairman of the, the committee. Nobody called me. Nobody said anything to me. Never hear back from John Jr. The last time I heard from John Jr. was, we are going to expel her. 
We are going to expect. I wonder in this cover, Kai was talking about we. We. Because that's what they do. They pull people in, use them to carry out their local dirty hatchet jobs, and then discard them. Because John Junior was never a part of the we. John Junior is solid as a rock PNP, man, I'll rise up. But in the band TV, they talk about we are going to expel her. And then once he accomplished that, they must dash him back. He accomplished the dirty work what I'm wanting him to accomplish. And no one feel like fat now about it. But that's in the band TV attack. To please them. Because nobody knew better than him how this process works. But in the band, we are going to expel her. We, because he put lump himself in there as a riser. We. He never knew the same was the part of them. Me know them, you know. Kai was a part of them. Because imagine them a sneaker. Where him get this wee thing from? <laughs> him not selling as a rat. How about the Jack Jr.? Where him get this wee thing from? Him discover very quickly that there was no wee. There was just him doing the hatchet job that they enrolled him to do. Instead of them dealing with the matter, they then came out to vilify me. To defend and support them pedophile and John Jr. going yard in disgrace. I talk about we, we are going to. They did that, and then I couldn't make them get away with that. So, you know the history of it. But what I wanted to remind you is how it all started and how it could have gone differently. My expectations up to up to now, you know, it took me a long time to come to my senses. Why did they go that route? The route was the sensible thing was the PMP thing was calling Karen Cross and tell us to bring the evidence. Come, put them went and are we going to expel her? Look what it got them. How was that working out for you all? That all we going to expel her? How that working out for you? This is the man that captured, hijacked the PNP. And people are talking about we are going to put things aside and go support our party. Go right ahead. Do you. Don't make me stop you. Go and do it. But me, as for me and the six of we out here, how many of you watch Grey's Anatomy? Grey's Anatomy fans. Apart from Derek and Meredith and Arizona and Cali and all of them, there's this one doctor on Grey's Anatomy, Owen, Dr. Owen Hunt. And Owen is kind of a G.I. GI Joe kind of guy. Came in, he joined Grey's Anatomy in um, season five in 2008. Yeah, season five. Came in from Iraq war. Came into an ambulance holding a man's heart. Couldn't let it go. But come in for right at the ambulance holding the heart. Because if you let it go, that fellow going to die. And um, Richard Weber hired him. What makes you um oh, and don't get much love from the Grey's Anatomy fans? Because them don't recognize him worth. But I do. Owen oh, is the kind of guy that any means necessary to save a life. Any means necessary. Yeah. Get a straw, stab it now in a in a in a man throat for make the blood stop up to him throat for him to talk. Everybody shock up. Get a a stapler, bop, 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 bop. a staple of a big wound. Make it go a hole until we, we, we stitch it up. That's the kind of guy. That who it is, as a doctor. Enemy is necessary. So hear me good, alone. Don't talk to me. Please, don't talk to me. Go have conversations with yourself. Because God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Who don't want us to put things aside. Who don't want PNP to win? Who don't want PNP to win? 
We don't want pay people waiting for the businesses. We don't want pay people waiting for the jobs. We don't want pay people waiting for the positions. The best thing that could happen to the People's National Party is for them to lose the local government elections. It is the best thing that could happen to this party. The best thing is for the PNP to lose and rebuild. Rebuild back now, man, man, the party. Put back now, man, man, as a founder. Take out the scammer. What if you clap? And put back Norman Manley and rebuild Norman Manley party. That's the best thing that could happen to the PMP right now. The very best thing. So we want some authentic PMP to win back then see. Enemy is necessary. Whatever information I have at my disposal, we're going to use it to beat down Mark Golden and beat it and ribbit it into the Jamaican people. That they should not give this man power. Just look at what he has done to one of the major political parties in this country. This party, this country, operates best on its two party system. But I want to go back to what I was saying about Maxine and Wilson. Imagine if Maxine and Wilson had to come out, and it was, it was to punctuate my point when I brought up the John Junior thing. To, to, to talk about what Maxine Ellen Wilson was doing. Maxine Ellen Wilson came out in public and said what she said in public. Now that's very, very unlike Maxine Ellen Wilson. Maxine Ellen is a party woman. So it's unlike her to do something like that. So you know what I think? I think that them dismissing people who telling them that this no right and that no right. They have been doing it since the beginning. If you're not rising, then the world hear nothing from you. If you're not rising like a high drunk, bro, then the one advice from you. Then the one hear from KD, then the one hear from Maxi, then the one hear from the body. Because you're not a riser. And you don't want to reward them for destroying the PMP and behaving the way they are. Go, Lisa, go. Walk with the authentic PMP. But don't make a mistake of walking with the risers. Don't walk with them. Them evil and poisonous. Them now listen. And that's the only thing I can come up with Max, why Maxine and Wilson would come out and say something like that. Them now listen to nobody. Maxine and a riser. Maxine solid as a rock. PMP. So them now listen to nobody. So them disregard people's advice. Because they're going to do this. Now, if Mr. Dayton Campbell is saying that he's going to win everything all over the place, nobody else can win but him, then clearly he might have workers that must go to him for them. Because he's going to win, so he must have some workers to go to. And he might have the strategy for the ground operation. And all the rest of it. So clearly, it might go in. I will continue to do my part to ensure that the PMP lose the election. Because it's the best thing that could happen to my party. And I'm a patriot. I am a patriot. God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the man that sat on his right, clutching the bag with the 30 pieces of silver, betrayed God's son. I wouldn't want to reward a traitor. Which part would you live? Which book would you ever read? Which movie would you ever watch? Which issue would you know of where a traitor is rewarded? Tell me, show me, show me. Which part will reward traitors in this world, wherever a traitor has ever been rewarded? I'm not rewarding him. And you, the voters of the country, should not do that either. Let me look if there's anybody asking something that I can answer, and then um, we can call it a night. Um, all right, somebody talking Chinese. Listen to me very carefully. When I talk Jamaican, <laughs> when I talk, talk Jamaican, I'm say Chinese there somewhere. I was watching. Which party do you think is going to win this election? 
May, do I think that which party is going to win? If I was to make a wild guess, I said the GLP have it. If I was to make a wild guess. But hear me out, let me back that up. Let me, let me explain up that to you. Why do I say that? They have some advantages that the PMP does not have. They have state power, so they have resources. They have a problem with workers, and they have a good election day machinery. Those are the three reasons why I believe that if I should make a prediction, I'm not making predictions, but you ask, so I'm saying if I should, if I could, if I should, it would be that. Because they have state resources, they have no personal problem, and they have a good election day um, ground operation. I mean, um, that's it. Anything else? Um, you can depend on me, Esther. Yes, uh... Oh, yes, that part. Thank you, comrade. On nomination day, they said that they're not giving the councillors them the money until after nomination. But when Patrick Roberts was here um, last week, Tuesday night, which is why I never do the live last week, Tuesday night, because Patrick Roberts was here, out of, out of my gate playing bingo, because it was my daughter's birthday, and them decided that this is how they going to celebrate, playing bingo, I will cook curry goat and do chicken and festival and all kinds of things. So when Patrick outside a stuffing face with festival and chicken, I asked him if they were give him any money. He said no. I said, hear me good boss. Go look some money for beg and tell the whole of them to go F off. He said they said I'm going to give him money. They going to give them some money after the um, nomination. I said, listen to me, Patrick, I listen to me very carefully. Go look money. Beg thief or borrow. And don't make Mark Golden give you no paper for sign that they are lending no money. Because it's a way for tie on to them. I want you authentic PMP candidates. Don't let them give you no paper for sign so they are lending no, no money. Because that's bunting trickery. For lending no money and tie on to them. You don't go look the money. Go beg. Corporate job can still not mean you don't go begging on the look at enclave and telling the people how much you don't have. Be honest with the people who are working on you. Tell them what are going with you and the money thing. And ask them to trust you. And when you ask them to trust you, you better make them can trust you, you know. With all of that. But they gave the riser candidates their money in um, nomination day. I tell the authentic PMP that they gave them money. They gave every one of them key riser candidates them money. Them just don't give one of the authentic PMP then no. And people want us to um Well if the risers want to borrow money from them, them can always borrow money from them, you know. But I'm saying to my counselor Patrick Roberts, if you have a mad out your skin and go borrow the money from Bunting, then we're going to stone your boy. May I tell you that? Oh, don't borrow money from them. Um, go struggle, go sell something, pawn something, put something, go borrow it from the bank, something, go do something to get a look of money. But don't borrow them money, don't take no money from them. Them is a scheming, lying, wicked um, set of vermin. <laughs> No, Mark don't like Patrick, but we don't like Mark. Patrick can't say he don't like Mark, but we don't like Mark for Patrick. So Mark now don't like him, because we don't like Mark for Patrick. My daughter said Mark want to do over. <laughs> Mark want to do over. Anyway, we would play a bingo and all kind of things and run all kind of things to help Patrick find money. And anybody out there listening to live and don't have any money, we don't send on something to Patrick Roberts, because Mark now give him the money. So they said I look a thing for him now. All of the big wigs them out there and we don't have a money. Send all the money to Patrick. Leroy Roberts. So if there is um nothing else, let me look through my list. If there if I miss anything. Um the voter enthusiasm. Oh, what well, uh, uh, there, there's something else. For you, the authentic PMP um candidates. If you see Julian Robinson, Philip Paulwell. Oh, yes. Natalie Nita, Fitz Jackson. Wanna send some help to Buju over eight miles. Dallas Division. 
We no call Consuela and send some help to Bujo. And one and two, I want to go walk with him. I ask Lisa for him to go and walk with Bujo. And say Bujo can rile up the PMP people them and knock off Mrs. Holness look a candidate. Who's not as good as Bujo. Bujo will make a better representative than the guy that Mrs. Holness putting up. Um, not me, not the guy, but you know, Bujo will make a better representative. So, you know, send on some help to, to Bujo, um, please. And Lisa, if you get this, you know, go help him. Um, uh... Yeah, Patrick can sell some studio equipment, yes, and, and <laughs> on the idol. There's nothing else to say. That's it for tonight. And um, thank you all for joining me. Thank you for watching me and listening to my rant and, and rage and go on. And I close tonight with what I started with. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. And he was betrayed by Judas. A man with free will, like you and me, he chose to betray the Son of God. Thank you very much. Remember, those of you who have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. I need the subscriptions. Um, bless up. I'm blessing up my new labor rights friend that I met on, on um, nomination day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Continue to be good Jamaicans, not just labor rights, but be Jamaican, defend Jamaica. No matter the color about it. And to you, to PMP people. Um, PMP people, just be Jamaica. Just Jamaica, you know, and, and just defend it. And, and make, we, um, make we help our country. God bless you all. Thank you for, for joining. Stay safe, everyone. And please, keep the children safe. Join, subscribe, like, share, all of that. Stay safe. Keep the kids safe. Good night.